go live. Let's see what happens. Preparing. Are you trying to extend this to four, uh, an hour and a half, or you want to just keep it as long as it's got to be? No, we'll go as long as as long as it needs to go. You know. How's the lighting? Because I could turn on my. Is that better? Looks good, bro. And we are now officially live on YouTube. I've never been live on YouTube before. I'm a little nervous, I'm not going to lie. First for everything. Let's see here. Let's do this. That's off. This one closing out. We got the chat up. We're good. Everybody's in. We are officially live on YouTube and we're going to get rolling. So, AJ, brother, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So, this has been, uh, this has kind of been a long time coming. Um, you know, we, uh, National Fire Radio, it's all about um, everything in the fire service. And we're not locked into one category. And this is a big part of it because. We talk about the kitchen table all the time and at the kitchen table, there's also a lot of food and a lot of good cooking that happens. Um, and so to have you here today with us, Fork and Hose Company, uh, just means the world. I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna document some cooking today out of your home kitchen and uh, hopefully help a couple of brothers and sisters out there uh, learn to enjoy cooking and bring it to the firehouse. So thanks for joining us, man. Thank you for having me. Uh, um, this is, you know, this is why I do what I do today to spread the good word, you know, the, the good culinary word. The so, good word. Rob, thanks for coming, man. Appreciate no problem. It. We're doing a, an <laughs> early my first time with Rob. What's that? This is my first time with Rob. You never forget your first time with Rob, I can assure you. I can drink, right? This is okay. Oh, of course you can. This is as much your show as it is ours. Yeah, man. and it's your kitchen, so you have to make those rules. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. The makeshift so, tripods and you know all that other stuff. So AJ, let's get let's hop right into it, brother. Like what what are we doing? I mean, the reason why we got together today was we really wanted to show off the ability and how easy it is to really prep a, a good rounded, a well-rounded meal for the firehouse, right? A lot of people don't have the ability or the abilities yet to put together a meal. And so a lot of guys get thrusted into this. They join the fire service, and next thing you know, they're they're uh, supposed to be cooking for the boys. And, uh, and it's a disaster. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of it is, is um, some, some guys and girls are scared. You know, maybe they don't cook at home. Maybe they, you know, they didn't grow up, you know, eating you know, home-cooked meals, that kind of thing. So it could be a daunting thing. And, you know, like we've talked about before, eating and cooking in the firehouse are one of the, the longest probably standing traditions that the fire service has, right? You know, like I say, people don't train every day in the firehouse, but every day you're eating and you're probably cooking or watching somebody else cook. So, you know, let's let's get more people cooking again, because I think there's a, a small group starting to get lazy on us, you know, and they're 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 like, oh, let's just order out. Let's just go get takeout or, you know, go to the deli and that kind of thing. And that's fine. Support your local businesses. But by all means, I think people uh shouldn't be afraid to cook. And, and, you know, I just want to show them just a couple techniques that are basic. You know, these are basic culinary techniques that will elevate, you know, some, I wouldn't call them mundane dishes, but everyday dishes like roasted potatoes, roasted right. carrots, that kind of thing. So, I think the, you, you hit on it before, brother, with the whole ease of it, right? As, especially with this coronavirus and everything we're dealing with now, we're all looking at the ease, right? We're, we're ordering online. We're doing, uh, you know, DoorDash and Uber Eats to get delivery and not shop to stay away from grocery stores. So we're limiting our shopping. And right. then now we're not even allowing our guys, everybody to eat at the same time in a firehouse typically or in the same room. But the importance of the kitchen is, is understated, I think. Yeah, a hundred percent. And, you know, if you have a, a crew that's willing to help, then, you know, you build camaraderie that way, you know, more yeah. hands in the kitchen, you know, I don't work with a big crew. I got me and two guys. So, you know, a lot of times I can handle a meal by myself. I'll do that. But if a guy wants to chip in, you know, Hey, or, or I know he's good at something in particular, by all means, I'll let him, you know, take the reins. Um, and every firehouse is different, but 
at the end of the day, if you're cooking a meal, you're sitting down, you're eating together, you're BSing over that meal, you know, what more do you want? And that's, that's where everything happens, right? I mean, you know, we, we talk about that front bumper or that kitchen table. Nothing's better than, you know, when you said before, maybe training's not happening every day, but meal is happening every day or three times a day. During that meal, typically there's some type of training nugget that gets thrown out anyway. So, you yeah. know, food, good food and company always breeds a winning combination. And that's in the firehouse and outside of it, right? I always think one of the things about cooking is that it gives you that opportunity, especially with uh, new guys to start the conversation. Maybe they're a little shy about something or, and it's that, uh, that opportunity to get, um, start getting the rapport, or rapport with somebody sure. and uh, especially giving them instructions and simple tasks. You know, I saw you slicing the potatoes before and like, you know, kind of explaining that and then giving it something, they start to take ownership of the shift and, uh, and the firehouse and the culture. So it's always a, I, I, I like meal. <laughs> and, then, and then the next time when, when you're breaking out the potatoes, they're probably more likely to be like, Hey dude, I'll cut those, you know, potatoes for you if you want, you know, yeah. there you go. You built up their confidence. Maybe next time they're going to cook those potatoes. Uh, speaking of potatoes. So we get into it a little bit. Like the, these guys, I didn't cut them too early. Potatoes oxidize. If you expose the, the flesh to the air. So if I cut these an hour and a half ago, they're going to start turning brown. They're not going to necessarily taste any worse, but they just won't be as appealing. Um, and these are these little baby potatoes, honestly, that my wife got. I don't usually use these. I prefer Yukon Golds. They're kind of like mid-range between a starchy potato, like a russet and a waxy potato. Um, and these are going to cook a little faster than normal, um, but it's no problem. Here's the key. When okay, it's, it's important to know, though, which ones you want to buy, right, for what you're doing, right? Exactly. So starchy potatoes, say like russets, you know, those are your standard, you know, baked potato. Um, sweet potatoes actually fall into the same category as well. But uh, russets are good for like French fries and that kind of thing. Uh, waxy potatoes, those are more geared towards um, anything where you want it to hold its shape. So potato salad or roasted potatoes or... Um, even like soups and that kind of thing. You don't want the potato to fall apart in a soup, right? Gotcha, um, right. So Yukon Golds, these guys, these are a little waxier than a Yukon Gold, but I like Yukon Golds because like I said, they're right in the middle. You could do kind of both with them. Um, and in this technique, when I roast potatoes, this I learned this in a kitchen, uh, my first commercial professional kitchen that I worked at. We're actually going to boil them first in heavily salted water, and that's going to season them from the inside out. Then we're going to roast them. All right. I got my oven preheated. I'm going to put the potatoes. Uh, I'm going to look at this counter now. Put the potatoes in. Then I fill it with cold water. It's important that you don't put them right in boiling water. Okay. Why? Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. All right. I just barely covered it too. I got about an inch of water over it. So if you put them in boiling water what happens is the outside of the potato starts cooking immediately right mm -hmm. the inside doesn't it takes a while for that water to penetrate the potato get into the middle by that time the outside's overcooked mushy falling apart so starting them in cold water it gives the the water to a chance to come up to the temperature and at the same time the outside will cook slower and kind of more evenly um, and when you talked about salted water aj i was always told Salt it like the ocean, right? Like one hundred percent, like pasta water, same thing. Right. So right. we have, we probably have a lot of people that the you know, people that are tuning in probably aren't proficient in the kitchen yet, right? So the whole goal of this is these little nuggets that help, right? So salting the water aggressively, right? Right, and potatoes in cold water. You know, I, I I like to try to cook healthy, right? I like to preach, you know, let's eat a little healthier. And a lot of times I get people like, oh, that's you know, I don't like salt, and like. I, salt is a personal preference. Like at the end of the day, you like more salt than I do, vice versa. But I will tell you this, if you cook without salt or you severely under season your food, it will not taste good at all. It brings out natural flavors, whether it's a potato, a carrot, a steak, uh, spinach. It, it, at the end of the day, if you don't season it properly, you're going to end up with bland food. And, you know, it's, and because of that, it's super important that you taste as you go as well. So I'm going to add salt to my water once it comes up to a boil. 
Um, I'm gonna add salt, I'm gonna taste it. If it tastes like the C, boom, I'm good to go. I'm gonna move on to the next test. But if it's not, I'll adjust, I'll add more. All right. AJ, one of the things too, right? Like uh, it's important to add the salt after the water is boiling for the uh, the longevity of the pot, right? Doesn't there, there's a possibility to do some damage with that if you add it? Um, um, yeah, I mean, yes and no. Like if, if you add it before it boils, it'll sit on the bottom if you don't stir it. Yeah. Um, but I, I think the primary reason for me at least is, you know, when water is coming up to a boil, it's evaporating. So you add it in the beginning, you think you're good. That water is going to evaporate and it's, it's just going to get a little saltier than maybe you want. Yeah. And AJ, it, what's the, what's the meal? I know we started with potatoes, but what's the overall meal? So everybody knows where we're headed with this. So we're doing roasted boneless chicken breast because I'd say seven out of 10 people, especially in the firehouse are like anti dark meat. So I think the best thing to do is start with something that most people like, um, chicken breast. I'm doing boneless, um, because I also know that some people kind of get freaked out by, uh, bone in chicken. Right. Fortunately, you know, it's hard to change that mentality. Um, and it's also going to cook a little faster without the bone. And then we're going to do roasted potatoes and roasted carrots in the same sheet pan. Um, so this, you could consider this like a, a sheet pan meal, which some people like to throw that term out and that just keeps things simple putting everything in one pan, less to clean up, you know, which is another big plus in the firehouse. Guys don't want like the whole freaking cabinet emptied out. <laughs> Especially for the new guys. Yeah. I mean, well, I know well, when I cook, I, I use every single pot and utensil there is. I got a buddy. He, he's on a job in Detroit, Scott Ziegler. He's also known as the <laughs> legend. He, uh, he did the year, a year on my lid. Yeah. Right. Remember that guy? So uh, he was telling me that, they had a probe in the house, single, it's a, it's a, they call them a double camp. So it was a ladder and engine, but one probe they used on purpose, every single pot and pan, <laughs> the pile, I'm not even joking. The pile <laughs> dish was tremendous yeah. only to break his shops. That's funny. But you know, that's part of the firehouse culture, right? There's these like these weird uh, idiosyncrasies and rules that, you know, seem to be everywhere whether it's the you know probies are cleaning up or, or the you know the senior men get to sit down and eat first that kind of deal there's a there's a there's a lot of different you know rules regulations in the firehouse kitchen always is so I also find that it's the place where you know most guys you know you sit back and listen but you also uh you know not only do you get the the stories of the senior man on down but the junior man also sometimes has the ability to speak up a little bit at the table too. Right, exactly. So uh, I've just peeled my, my carrots, right? These carrots are varying in size. The most important thing here is you want to kind of cut them, give or take the same, uh, the same size so that they cook fairly evenly. Me personally, um, uh, uh, my first chef, she, she showed me this. We're going to cut them into an oblong shape, which is great because it doesn't mean they have to be perfect. They just have to be the same size. So they're, they're not, you know, diced or chopped or anything like that. Just kind of like oblong. And what that does is as they roast, these tips that are thinner are going to get a nice brown color. They'll, they'll crisp up a little bit and you'll still have that nice center that's uh, cooked through but soft. We're going to season these and coat them in oil before we put them on the sheet pan. That's really important. Um, I think a lot of people screw that part up. I think I talked about that in the Size Up podcast. What kind of oil are you gonna use on those? Olive oil. I probably would say 99% of the time I cook with olive oil, unless I'm frying, because you know there's different smoke points. Um, olive oil breaks down a lot faster. Um, so- I'm Sure, it has nothing to do with your Italian roots. No, not at all. It has nothing to do with the fact that I have olive oil in my veins. Yeah, exactly. But though there's a lot of flavor in olive oil, right? And and then you know, obviously too, there's there's different types, right? Extra virgin, yep. uh, and so on. So to be honest, what extra virgin? Get really confusing. Yeah, I just go with extra virgin. Yeah. You know, there's you could get a bottle of extra virgin olive oil from fifteen bucks up to fifty bucks. 
Right. So shop within your budget, but also, you know, use it accordingly. So if you have two different olive oils, this is, you know, standard, standard olive oil, uh, cook with that, right? The really expensive ones, don't, don't fry your chicken in that. You know, that's where you drizzle on your salad or you finish your vegetables with. Right. You know, that's- When you're doing, when you're doing frying though, you're using a different type of oil, correct? Yeah, you want to use a neutral oil, you know, your canola oil, stuff like that. Um, gotcha. Because it's got a higher smoke point. Um, but, you know, Italian grandmas, they're, they're, they're frying their chicken cutlets in olive oil. Like I do my stuff. cutlets in olive oil. Yeah. So if you're deep frying, that's a different story. I don't, I'm not saying like go deep fry your Thanksgiving turkey in olive oil. That'd be Fresh. extremely expensive and it wouldn't even taste good because it would be bitter um, from the olive oil breaking down. So my, uh, my water's just starting to like bubble up a little bit. I've got my carrots in the bowl, right? We're going to coat them in olive oil. We're going to toss them around a little bit. Season them with salt. What kind of salt do you use, AJ? This is kosher. Um, this is just straight up kosher salt. You know, it, it, it's a big box, right? Keep yeah, it I, I like Diamonds, the, the company I like, only because right. that's what I used in school and then in restaurants. Um, buy what you could afford. Um, it's not really crazy expensive anyway. But, but AJ, for the, for the new guy, right, we should really talk about table salt versus kosher salt, though, right? Yeah. Because you took the words right out of my mouth. The salt, they're going to see you pouring that salt on. And for the new guy that doesn't cook, man, you know, you got to be careful. Table salt, you know, the, the stuff that has iodide in it and all that other crap, it, it's, it's such a, uh, it's a different taste. It's a stronger flavor. So, you know, you got to be careful. If you've got iodized salt, you know, and you're looking at me doing this and you do the same thing, yours is probably going to end up a little saltier. Right. Please avoid it. Like, honestly, like, just don't use it. <laughs> Throw it out. Use it to, you know, whatever, clean your butcher board. But, uh, Regular kosher salt is perfectly fine. If you want to use sea salt, go for it. I have sea salt, but I only use that um, for certain things, you know, if I'm uh, feeling a little, you know, fancier or something. <laughs> um, but kosher salt is fine. And then here's where I think, you know, you could add a little more to your meal. So dried spices. I got cumin here. This is just ground cumin. Um, just a pinch of that. You don't need a lot. And it's going to add flavor. You're not adding, you know, extra fat or extra calories or, or a super expensive ingredient. Like it's just dried spice. And this is something where like the guys are going to eat it and they're going to be like, oh, this is good. You know, what is that? You know, they're not going to put their finger on it, but you're elevating that dish a little more than, um, than you normally would. So I, I toss it with olive oil, salt. I got my cumin on there. Let me check my potatoes. They're coming. It just came up to a boil. So now I'm going to add my salt. Do you cover, you don't cover your potatoes when you boil them? Yeah. I want to hear it. I want to see it. I want to. Okay. I don't want to. The more the the sink more of the firehouse, if, if you're in a hurry, if you cover it, oh, will yeah. boil. It'll, yeah, it'll come up to a boil quicker. And what I'm actually going to do is once it's up to a good boil, I'm actually going to lower it a little. Because if you really have that thing ripping, and you're not paying attention, you're, you're, you know, you run the risk of overcooking them, number one, but also busting up the outsides. I'm trying gotcha. to keep these things intact. Mm -hmm. You can also see, I'm like, I'm set up, right? That's important. When you're cooking, have everything ready to go. I, I don't have a big strainer, um, I'm sorry, a big colander that would fit in the pot. So I have a, a colander here in the bowl. And I'm going to use this, it's called the spider. Uh, and I'm just going to scoop out my potatoes, put them in the strainer. Reason I'm doing that is I want those potatoes to dry out a little bit before I add them to my roasting pan. Because if you go wet potato into an oven, it's going to take a little longer for them to, uh, you know, to, to, to crisp up like we're looking for. I'm also going to add some, uh, I have some fresh thyme. I'm going to add that to the carrots and the potatoes too. You, can you mentioned, do you mentioned uh, spices earlier, like cumin yeah. right, that you sprinkled on your carrots. Yep. Between dried spice and in this case, right, you're using fresh thyme. Yep. Big difference between the two, right? Huge difference. Right. Um, you know, th this actually came in, it's called a poultry kit. My wife had picked it up and it has thyme, 
rosemary. There was sage in here. I used that the other day. Right. So there's a big difference in fresh and, and dry. Um, the problem with fresh, though, uh, especially in a firehouse setting, if you don't use it all, you know, you run the risk of it going bad in the fridge and you just wasted money, right? So I think it's really important if you're going to use fresh herbs, plan ahead a little bit, right? So, okay, I bought thyme. I got a ton of thyme today. I'm going to use it in my potatoes and carrots today. Tomorrow, I'll, I'll do uh, maybe some, some fish with lemon and I'll put some thyme in it. You know, number one, you're, you're extending the meal a little bit, right? You're taking ingredients that you paid money for and everybody knows you're in the firehouse, you're on a budget. So whatever you're buying, you better use it all. Right. You guys right. don't see their money go down the drain or in the trash can. Um, and that's important in general, like, you know, even for your house, just you, you, you spent money on it. Why let it go to waste? Um, with that being said, if, you know, your firehouse, you know, you just don't think you could do it. You could use dry thyme or dried rosemary. Just don't use as much. Yeah. Slow it down. Right. Yeah. Because when it dries out, it concentrates in flavor. Um, and it, it's a stronger flavor. So, you, you know, you don't want to overpower whatever it is you're using. So we got some thyme in there, cumin, um, olive oil, salt. Let's talk about the chicken. So the chicken, you can see it's on a, a pan that's on a rack. The only thing I've done so far to this chicken is I actually salted this this morning and put it back in the refrigerator uncovered. All right. The reason we do that, and you don't have to do this. This is a step that, you know, if you don't have time, by all means, don't worry about it. But if you could get it in the fridge, um, if you're doing skin on chicken, the air in the fridge, it's circulating, right? And that's actually going to dry out that skin and help us get a, a better color on that, brown it up a little bit better. And we're going to start these off in the pan. I'm going to sort of pan fry them right off the bat, skin side down. And then I'm going to flip them and we're going to put them in the oven. And these little nuggets here for my daughter, Ava, those are the chicken tenders that were attached. So when I, uh, AJ, can you talk real quick about chicken itself? I mean, you know, there was a question here. Uh, one of the guys in the comments said, uh, not knowing the bone layout of chicken and other bone meats definitely makes me not want to eat it as much as say the boneless, right? When it comes to chicken, you know, you, you go to the grocery store and you buy chicken breasts in those, uh, pre-made tubs by, you know, different companies versus right. fresh chicken from the butcher and so on. You just talk about that a little bit? Yeah. It, you know, it's a, it's a matter of, of budget, number one. So if you can afford the better stuff, you know, a company, and I'm not paid by them by any means, Bell and Evans, I think is probably the best company out there. Um, they air, they air chill their chicken. Um, so they, they don't submerge it in water to chill them down. Um, and that, results in a better product and you know you know those butchers are, are you know hopefully treating them with care right you know they're they're taking care of those birds when they're butchering them for the case um rather than just a machine destroying them you just end up with a better end end product it's kind of right. like you know the, the key with cooking especially you know it's like italian cooking take simple ingredients not a lot of them and just treat them with respect you know treat them with care and, and you're going to end up with a, a good meal. That, and that's I know, I know in our house, I mean, we do a lot of cooking here in my house with my kids and my wife and I, but I know with chicken, like I made a point of trying to get chicken from the butcher, maybe spend a couple extra bucks on it. But I think the quality is just so much better than the, the prepackaged like grocery store stuff. Yeah. And if you think about it, like you get chicken from the butcher, it's, cleaned, it's prepped. It's, it doesn't have that, slime and juice in the bottom of your styrofoam canoe you know you see it. like you could literally just without even touching it opening right. the package you could just look at it and go that looks like a good piece of chicken and yeah i agree i agree like i said it's it comes down to budget you know if you sure. can afford it please by all means i think you should do it i just i think i'm gonna add some garlic to this too um the thing with garlic is you gotta be aware of so I'm using the side of my knife carefully. I'm just pounding it down because I'm just going to keep them pretty whole. I'm just going to smash them and that's going to make sure that they don't burn while they're cooking rather than chopping them up or dicing them. That's another thing people need to keep in mind. You know, when you cook, be aware of the size of, 
the you know the vegetable that you're cutting how you're going to cook it you know i think people just go into like auto mode you know like autopilot right you know, they the problem i think with recipes is you know people read a recipe they go online they do, 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 do. they go you know buy the book they go by, by line by line they follow everything to a t and it doesn't work out and they think they're a bad cook it's like no the problem is that person that did that recipe their kitchen's different than yours. Maybe they left some things out. You know, you have to, you could use a recipe by, as a guide by all means, but you have to, as you're cooking, learn on your own what works, what doesn't work. Why didn't it work? Why did the garlic burn? Oh, I cut it too small. I'm frying. Why would I do that? Leave it whole next time. You know, these are the things like you got to just learn as you go. Make mistakes. Like we want you to make mistakes because that's how you learn, right? That's right. So I'm just checking my potatoes. They're almost there. How do you know, AJ? Just for guys, you know, listening and watching, how do they, how do you know they're almost there? I mean, do you stab so, them with a fork or you? Well, this one I just ate because I think they're pretty they're actually right close. Um, you can, you know, there's the knife trick. If you stick the knife in and it pulls out, and it's like you could do that. That's that's fine. But if your if your potatoes are cut, especially, you'll right. see you'll see like the outside get rough and kind of fluffy and that kind of thing. That's when you know you're good. The skin might start to peel away. Um, that that sort of thing. So I'm gonna kill the heat. I'm gonna use my spider. Um, if you know we had a whole setup here, I would just do this in the sink. It'd be a lot easier. But I'm trying to keep everything in view. So there's no uh, magic tricks. This Magic of uh, food TV, where I think you come back from commercial and everything's ready to go. Yeah, just like snap yep. my fingers. Yeah, everything's done. Yeah, the whole kitchen of food sh sous chefs behind you that are prepping yeah. everything for you. I tell you, I sat in the live audience of a of a female celebrity cook once, and in between breaks, man, it was intense. Oh, I'm I've, sure. Yeah, I've, I've been screamed at by many women before, but geez, this was really. I mean, you know, chefs have that whole like aura you know that they're lunatics and whatever they scream i'm lucky enough where you know i haven't worked for any of those lunatics but um you know whatever they're they're in every industry it's not it's not just the restaurant mm -hmm. um so you can see i'm gonna try to hold them up steam is probably getting in the way but the edges are kind of rough they're kind of fluffy looking and i just wanted to dry out a little bit now we're going to toss them together with the carrots and some more oil Put them on a roasting pan, put them in the oven, and then we're going to start the chicken. That's the other thing. Kitchen, uh, kitchen, cooking is timing, right? Like in your head, plan things out. So while the potatoes are cooking, I'm prepping out my carrots, right? When these go into the oven, I start my chicken. Um, you know, you think, try to think ahead. And that's when a recipe does become helpful if it's written right. You know, it's, it's going to give you like a, a good guide of when you should start things, hopefully. Um, but like I said, you know, look at the recipe, but don't, you know, don't be glued to it. Right. Right. So just for everybody tuning in, right. As we keep going here, we're doing roast chicken breasts with carrots and potatoes on a sheet tray. Right. Yep. And then I think I'm going to elevate this a little bit. Well, look little at bit. you, look at you getting crazy. It's not even crazy. It's, it's one of those things where. It, it just takes like something that maybe everybody's used to like, oh man, shit, uh, roasted chicken again. Right. So, but now what, you know what, we're going to put a little chimichurri sauce on it. Nice. You know, and it, it's just like one of those things. It's not hard. I'm going to, I'm using everything I'm using right now. Everybody should have in the firehouse, right? Like you should have a cutting board, you should have a chef knife, you should be sharp, right? That's a whole nother episode. Mm. You got bowls, you know, pots, pans, Cheap pans, like there's nothing really here that out of the ordinary, right? I'm not using crazy ingredients. These are all accessible things you might already have. Um, uh, so it, it's something that I think, you know, should be no problem for everybody to get together. Right. So I've got my, my sheet pan. We're going to get these going here. I'm going to put a little olive oil on the bottom just so that I make sure nothing's going to stick per se. I've got these carrots that we already coated in oil and seasoned, right? I'm gonna put my... And AJ, again, those carrots were 
chopped up, same size, right? And then we did salt, pepper, uh, fresh thyme. I actually didn't do pepper. I'm not okay. okay. Yeah, black pepper. Um, I don't use it a lot. That's um, okay. Just, you know, I feel like it's overused sometimes. Like in every recipe, it's like black pepper, black pepper. Why? Like, right. let's think. Like, is that a flavor that we want in the dish? I particularly don't want it, but it's not to say that you don't have. You know, you can't put it. Right. And you went with cumin on it too, right? So it's a little little kick on that end. Yeah, it's just an added level of flavor that didn't take time, right? Didn't take much effort. Sprinkle right. it on there, and it's it's a uh, you know it's it's a way to kind of elevate some stuff that you know might be mundane. So I got my potatoes, and if you look, like they're kind of the same size as the carrots, right? That's what I was saying before. Like, try to think of what you're cooking, what how you're going to cut it. You know, what is it going to cook like? I'm going to do a little more olive oil. Don't be afraid of fat, please. Like, salt and fat. There's, there's, there's a, a, a saying that three things make food taste good. Salt, fat, and acid, right? The, the two things that most home cooks and like firehouse cooks get nailed, they, they nail it is like the salt and the fat. The acid part is what, you know, sometimes we lack. And that's where this chimichurri is going to come into play. It's yeah, it sounds fantastic. A little bit of that bite. It's going to cut through any, you know, richness of the, uh, the olive oil. It's going to be delicious. So AJ, real quick, you've tossed everything in the bowl and then you put it on the sheet tray and then you did a little more oil. Is that because you just felt that it needed a little more fat to, to roast? Two things. Yes, that, but also by adding it to a bowl, tossing it in the oil, we're ensuring that every surface area is coated. Right. In that. You know, Perfect. if I don't do that, you might end up with dry bits. Um, when you use fresh herbs, that's important because if you have, uh, say, fresh rosemary or thyme, you throw it in there and it's not coated in a, in a fat like an olive oil, you run the risk of burning it a lot quicker. Gotcha. The thing with garlic, you know, garlic, if it's not if it's dry, it's, it's going to burn on you. So it, there's a, a few different reasons, but that's, that's like one of those little tips. Like most people don't do that. They skip that step. Right. Um, boiling the potatoes first. Like I said, you don't have to do that, but it makes a world of a difference. Yep. So I'm going to throw these in my oven. I got preheated 450. Oh shit. I only have 425. All right. I'm going to raise it. 450. Uh, People are afraid to cook with high heat. We talked about this in the podcast too, I think. Yep. Everything's 350, right? 350, 350, 350. Well, you turn your oven on. That's what the preset is, right? Like if you have an automatic oven, it's the preset. Right. Yeah. So um, you don't need to cook at 350 all the time. I, I personally think when you roast things like vegetables, especially high heat will yield a better result. If you take a, you know, a carrot and it's whole, and you throw it in there, yeah, you're probably going to burn it before it's cooked through. But if you make sure you cut everything right, the right size, then you should be fine. Uh, now we're going in the oven at 450 yeah. for how long on that tray? Right to cook these? Yeah. We're looking at 30 to 40 minutes, probably. Okay. Give or take. Um, it all depends. Like I said, you know, I could say 30, 40 minutes, but if you cut the vegetables, you know, way bigger than what I did, it's going to take a little longer. Just think about those things as you go, you know? Right. So we're going to start going on the chicken um, in a couple minutes. That's, you know, 20, say 25 minutes on boneless breast. So if I did that now and I add it and I throw it in the oven, I'm going to overcook that before the carrots and the potatoes are done. Right. So I'm trying to time everything right. So perfect time to bullshit a little bit. Maybe get going on this chimichurri. Chimichurri is, you know, there's so many different variations on it, but the basic stuff that you need, parsley, shallot, you could use onion, but shallot's a little more milder flavor. Garlic, I like red wine vinegar in mine. Some people use uh, white wine vinegar or lemon. Olive oil, salt, that's basically it. You could add hot pepper if you want, but uh, if Ava's going to eat this, I don't want to, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So um, that's it. Yeah. This is this is not only good on like roasted chicken, roasted vegetables, but it's also f fantastic on grilled meats. That's where it comes from, Argentina. 
And if you've ever been to like one of those like Argentinian steakhouses, they're phenomenal. I'm not allowed that. Uh, like on flank steak or on on uh, skirt steak. Yeah, it would be outstanding. Yeah. Just not hibachi skirt steak. What are you chopping now, AJ? What are you chopping up? Parsley. Okay. You could use flat leaf, uh, right? what's that? Flat leaf parsley. Yeah, I mean, curly kind of went out in like the seventies. Uh, it's a garlic. Um, to, to cook with curly parsley, it's fine, but if you if you get flat leaf, you're much better off. And I'm just looking for a pretty fine chop on this. Hey, you're just chopping this up. Like, just how how did you go from culinary school to the fire department? Did you fall into the fire department, or was this like a? Uh, that. What's that? Reverse it. I went from fire, fire department to culinary. I'm still in the fire department. Right, right. But uh, I went fire department, culinary school, and now I'm doing both. So I went to culinary school in 2016. And I started the fire department in 2005. Okay. So I had, you know, for a little period, I wasn't like crazy happy at work, you know, like kind of in a little low. And my wife just asked me one day, what would you want to do if you weren't a fireman? And I said, I'd want to cook. So she said, do it. And long story short, I was able to find a program at International Culinary Center in Manhattan that was a night class. It was two, day, two nights a week, 14 month. It was like their longest program, but it was the only way I could do firehouse and culinary school. Uh, I was lucky enough, one of the senior guys, like a, a few guys helped me out, but this one senior guy, he covered my ass a lot. We did a lot of mutuals, made it work, and I was able to do it. And then from there, I went into um, a professional kitchen in Manhattan, working for a chef that I look up to a lot. And I recently stopped working at a kitchen around here. Uh, it's a wood-fired Italian place. Um, restaurants right now are struggling. So, Very much so. you know, the last thing they, they need is like some part-time guy on their books. <laughs> But uh, I definitely want to get back in the kitchen again, and and, and you know keep pursuing that. Because when there's some, are there some similarities in the kitchen between what you see in the firehouse as far as the the, sen uh, the senior firefighter to the junior uh, firefighter versus like the, the chef to the the sous chef or somebody that's coming in off the off the street? Yeah, um, the only difference I think is is age, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm 36. You know, I could go into a restaurant tomorrow and that executive chef could be 25 because he or she started, you know, much earlier than me. Um, but there is that, that hierarchy, you know, like, you know, you have chiefs and captains and lieutenants and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You've got, you know, executive chefs, sous chefs. Um, depending on how big the restaurant is, you could have uh, chefs in, that are ahead of different stations, even, you know, so... There, there's a lot of similarities in, in a professional kitchen that most people probably don't even think about um, that I, I, I want to say made it easier, a, a, an easy transition, you know, like my, my respect for, you know, somebody being in charge of me is, is a lot better than maybe some kid who just started in, in working in a restaurant has never had somebody tell him like, this is how you're going to do shit and you better do it right or, or else, you know? So what do you got there? You want a shallot? So we got the shallot. What's it, get, just give the uh, the novice chef a little background on that? Why why is shallot instead of like an onion or yellow or white onion or shallots have so onions in general have you know different uses. Uh, red onions are much more pungent, right? It's kind of like a you know you love them or you hate them kind of deal. Yellow onions, I think, are or pretty much your standard. So if a recipe calls for an onion, it's usually talking about a yellow onion. You've got Vidalia onions, which are sweet. Um, so depending on what you're looking for, you know, you might want to use a Vidalia onion. Shallots are just a mild, uh, a milder flavor. They don't have as much bite. 
They're not going to make you cry when you cook, you know, you cut them. Uh, so we're not cooking this, this shallot, right? This is going to be raw in the chimichurri. You don't want something that's going to be too potent, right? You want something that's going to be nice and mellow and kind of play nice in the sandbox with the rest of the ingredients. Uh, so hence why we use a shallot. Gotcha. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually start on the chicken. All right. I've got, this is an oven proof pan, right? I could put this in the oven, no problem. There's no rubber coating on the handles or anything like that. It's not a nonstick. Um, if you don't have one of these, you could use a cast iron pan, uh, but you just want to make sure that it's oven safe because we're going to cook this in the oven right in this pan. If you don't have a, a skillet that is oven safe, you could brown the chicken in, in a skillet like this and then transfer it to a sheet pan and finish it in the oven that way. So what do we have to do? So I got my pan uh, preheating. Once it comes up to temp, I'm going to add my olive oil, skin side down, get nice color on it, like I said, flip it, then throw it in the oven and let it cook with the potatoes and carrots. So I got my shallot, I cut it in half, I peeled it, and we're gonna, we're gonna attack this like we would a regular onion. All right, so you got your, your standard horizontal cut, then we're gonna go vertical like this, and then we're going to chop it and it's going to be done in two seconds. All right. So we go two. I'll do two vert horizontal cuts, turn it. And then this is where you kind of pick how big you want it to be. I want it pretty fine just because I don't want to chew on a, a big raw piece of shallot. And then we turn it. And this is where it helps to have a sharp. Knife. Cut, obviously guys with, without classical training, takes a long time to really master knife skills. And you and I talked about that. We're going to do some content on that down the road, but just watching you just, you know, letting the guys, you know, be familiar, you tuck your fingers in as the guy so that you're not putting them out there to be clipped. Yeah. So I'll try to get this in the overhead view, but I'm not doing this. Right. Right. You want you, you kind of want to curl your, your fingers back and that ideally that knife never leaves that knuckle. Right. Because the minute you start to do this and you come back, you're either going to chop your knuckle off or, you know, you might screw up and, and end up getting a fingertip. You are yeah. going to cut yourself. It is going to happen. Believe. Especially in the firehouse, too. The last thing you need to do is get your balls broken for the next 30 years of your career. Oh, 100%. Off in the, uh, in the chimichurri sauce. All right. So I got the pan preheated. The olive oil is in the pan. Remember, I salted this ahead of time, right? So... I'm not seasoning it again. Uh, if you didn't salt it ahead of time, you'd want to season it now. And, and you could use salt and pepper, salt, pepper, paprika. If you've got a special rub you want to use, um, it doesn't matter. I just like the clean flavor of salt. So I'm going skin side down. And I'm just going to keep an eye on that and let it, uh, let it get some nice color. Now, AJ, how do you know it's hot? How do you know it's ready to go? The oil will start to shimmer mm -hmm. in the pan. Um, you could do, there's another test you could do. You could take a, a wooden spoon actually and dip the end of it in. If it bubbles up, that usually means that it's ready to go. You can touch the ingredient that you're going to cook into the oil. If it starts to sizzle, you know you're good to go. Um, it's in this case, it's all right if it's not ripping hot because we kind of want it to get some nice golden color. We don't want it to burn because um, it's going to get cooked again in the oven. So I got my shallot in there. I'm going to add a. Okay. AJ, I just wanted to jump into like that, like the low heat thing, especially with people that have like electric ovens or electric yep. stove tops, just because of how fast that electricity can kind of kick up the heat sometimes. It, it's it's all heat management and cooking, right? Mm -hmm. You you. You really shouldn't step away from the stove, right? Like you, you, and like right now, I'm not looking at it, but I'm listening, right? I'm smelling. If I smell something like, oh, that doesn't smell good, chances are I'm burning something. Or if I hear something like sizzling really hard, I'm gonna make sure that I go check real quick. Well, we can hear it in the background, and it's just a, a light sizzle. You know, it's not it's not slamming right. away back there. Right. And and another thing too is when you're when you're doing something like this, it always helps. Kind of lift up your, your ingredient and then place it back down. And what that does is it, it redistributes that oil underneath. Nice. It has that ingredient sitting in the pan. The, the oil. Right, that's mm -hmm. a good point. But uh, it's, it's all heat management. It's 
that's the one thing like you have to know your equipment you know everybody knows like especially if you got like a grill right like this part is stupid hot i can't cook anything in that part this part i can't cook anything because it doesn't cook at all you know it's 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 all repetition learning what 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 your ingredients are or, sorry your equipment is like so going back to that knife thing again you can see like my my finger is not leaving that knife yeah i can sit here all day and i won't kill my now what is that garlic this is garlic yeah this is going in the chimichurri and you could also once you get to this point instead of doing this put your hand on top and you're just rocking back and forth um, there's another trick you could do if you want to get this to like a paste. You know what? I'll show you guys. Fuck it, right? Oh, sorry. Can I say that? <laughs> it's your show. All right. So I got my chopped, my finely chopped garlic. I'm going to sprinkle some salt on it. And I'm actually going to use my knife flat against the board. And I'm going to drag it, right? Now, keep in mind, when you do this, you are releasing a lot of garlic flavor. So if you don't like garlic, don't do this. But if you love garlic, like my house, we don't care. We keep the vampires away. And I'm just dragging my knife, dragging. You're basically making a paste, right? Exactly. Like the salt's breaking down the, the thickness. It's an abrasive, yeah, it's, exactly. It's an abrasive. So between that, the knife, the cutting board, um, you're just making a paste, basically. Keep gathering it up. And I'm kind of angling it towards the board a little bit. You get the idea. Put that with my shallot. And at this point, I'm going to add my vinegar and salt to the shallots and the garlic. The reason being, and I'm eyeballing this because I like to do things by taste, but um, the reason being, acid will turn uh, fresh herbs like parsley, cilantro, basil, turn them a dark green once they hit them. So you, you kind of want to let the shallot and the garlic absorb these flavors, the, the, the vinegar and the salt. When you use vinegar, it's going to take a lot more salt than you think, honestly. I'm going to let that chill out. Go back to my chicken. Check on that. I'm actually going to turn this up a little bit. Check my vegetables real quick. Those look good. I'm actually going to flip them, give them a little toss. You're going to toss the vegetables? Yeah, just so that they get cooked a little more even. And like the back of my oven is much hotter than the front. So I'm going to rotate the pan itself as well. Gotcha. I've noticed like my firehouse, the oven is so, the, the temperatures are so off. You got to rotate like 10 times just to get anything even. It's a firehouse, so what do you expect, right? That's true. I mean, I know like my firehouse, it's uh, it's hit or miss when you're cooking, how the, how the equipment reacts. I mean, we, you know, our stove at headquarters has got to be 50 years old. You know what I mean? It's a big old industrial stove and it's- uh, It'll never break. Definitely right. not even. It'll never break. No, never break. Old Vulcans. So, what are your guys? I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the tables a little bit. Do it. Mm. All right. What are your your go to meals? You know, like what what do you cook either in the firehouse, home? Uh, you know, what are your standard meals that you like to do? Yeah, Rob. What do you? What's your uh, uh, spaghetti and meatballs? meatballs. <laughs> do some spaghetti and meatballs. Uh, chicken parm. Um, we have, there's a guy out there, uh, food wishes. We've done a lot of, like, we had one pot orzo. That's pretty good. Guys like that. And kind of just throw it together. Um, we did, uh, oh, my uh, wife always makes fun of me cause I can't pronounce words cause I'm, you know, special. Uh, but the, the, uh, there was like a one pan paella. Is that? Yeah. 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 With the uh, shrimp. Nice. So, and I did, and the big, the cool. biggest thing I think I have is just trying to figure out if I got a guy who will uh, eat stuff off of a bone, or if I got the vegetable guy who's anti-vegetables, Eric Foster, I'm talking to you. Um, you know, that's always the uh, like the, the struggle, but for most part, guys eat what we, we cook. I think that's every firehouse, Rob. Dude, you know what, though? You, you hit, you hit such an important thing. Guys that don't eat vegetables have never had good vegetables. 
I'm kidding. Right. Right. Like I was not a big vegetable guy growing up. I was meat and potatoes. And now it's like learning how to cook properly, like vegetables. You can make vegetables rock, dude. Like some mm-hmm. of the food I've eaten are like well-cooked, well-seasoned vegetables. I think when it, when it comes to vegetables, the problem is this people, the people that are cooking, right. They don't put the effort into those vegetables. Right. It's like, yeah. They focus on the big piece of steak or right. piece of fish or the pork chop or whatever it is. And then it's like, oh, shit, I'm going to make spinach. So uh, a little bit of you know, salt and call it a day. Not thinking about how they're going to cook it, what they're going to season it with. You know, so you got to put the effort into it and just think about like ways to make them taste good. And that's that's a great point, Jeremy, that I think a lot of firemen or firefighters sorry. That, I love it, man. Like I, you know, like I said, I was never, and now it's like, man, I, I love, I mean, there's certain vegetables I, I don't get into, but like, I think what happens is like, I know growing up, I didn't grow up in a big, like home cooked home. Like my, my mother, God, God bless her. You know, she, she cooked all the time for us. It was frozen bags of, right. of vegetables. It wasn't yeah. fresh vegetables. And then all you do is boil them or nuke them and throw them on a table and it, they're not appetizing, you know? Yeah. But if you can take roasted broccoli, roasted cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and like things like that, and roast them and get color on them. Like you're doing with the carrots in the oven. Like I love roasted carrots. They're just, they're yeah. delicious because they're so sweet. And I don't know anybody that wouldn't like a roasted carrot. They just probably never had them cooked properly. You almost want to like blindfold them. Say, look, yep. I'm going to put a blindfold on you. You're going to eat this food. It's not going to hurt you or kill you. Let me know what you think. And they're probably going to go like, man, that tastes like a carrot, but that doesn't taste like a carrot I'm used to, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We got a lot of guys that just don't eat veggies and, and you're like, well, you know, so be it. My kids, like in my house, um, we cook all the time and my kids are very good eaters and they, they eat vegetables. They eat everything, you know? Right. Uh, oh, they, yeah. I don't, I don't want to forget too. I, I smoke meats all the time. Oh, that's, that's right. That, yeah. that never hurts. <laughs> that never hurts. But yeah, the, you know, the vegetable stuff too, Jeremy, is like uh, Brussels sprouts. If, you know, my, I think my family would have just avoided so many problems if they would have added some chicken broth and some bacon. And I've, I've converted so many people onto uh, Brussels sprouts just by a little bacon bits and some chicken broth. And it's like- You can add bacon to pretty much anything. It's going to yeah. somebody, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I will tell you, AJ, uh, on Easter- because of the quarantine, the grocery stores are getting picked through. So I ended up doing whole chickens. And because of you, I tried something new. I, I love to cook at home. We cook at home all the time. Um, and I spatchcocked two chickens. And that's basically cutting the backbone out, pressing them flat, and then just giving it a shot with the butcher knife. And then they lay flat and you, you roast them. They were so good and so delicious. Like everybody raved about them. And then we just made like a pan sauce with the drippings. And it was just really, really good. And it was just something new and different that we tried. And I loved it. My kids loved it. My wife loved it. It was just really good. So thank you for that, man. Yeah, no problem. If you go to my Instagram um, highlights, I have the video up there. I think I still have it up there. It should be up there. Of how to spatchcock a chicken. And I think tonight I'm going to put up a video on how to break down a whole chicken into parts. So quartering and cutting the, the quarters up to eights and, and that kind of thing. So uh, look out for that tonight. But um, yeah. We got to, um, you know, we should tell everybody too, you and I have been talking for quite a while about putting something together um, and doing more of this type of content because I think the shorter version stuff, and I think I'd love to get some feedback in the, in the live feed as we're going here, but we're talking about doing like three to five minute videos just on different types of prep and how to buy and how to cook and how to do this and how to do that. I, I think it would be very beneficial for a lot of guys out there to learn how to, uh, how to manage the kitchen better in the firehouse. Yeah. Honestly, you know what it comes down to? And, and I think this is just in general cooking, not just firehouse or not even just probie cooking. It's like learn techniques, right? It's like learn how to scramble an egg, like right. the basic, the basic stuff. Once you build on those techniques is when you could start adding your own flair or flavors and ingredients. But it's like, once you learn how to like properly cook pasta, you can do anything. Mm-hmm. people ask What's, me a lot like oh do you have a good recipe for this and it's like yeah maybe i, I don't have a recipe in my you know i written down per se but maybe it's in my head but it's like focus on it in technique first before yeah. you start worrying about a specific recipe 
Yeah. So listen, I know this is all going to come together soon. So my question to you too is yeah. when you are that probie firefighter and you, you come into the firehouse for one of your first Real quick, sorry to cut you off. No, do it, do it. So I'm trying to do this without burning any myself. So you see I got some nice brown color on the chicken, right? So I'm going to kill this and these are going to go in the oven. And while I'm doing that, I'm checking my potatoes and carrots. They look pretty good. Probably another 10, 15 minutes on those. Awesome. So where I was going with this is when you're that new probie, man, you come into firehouse, you might have never cooked before, right? Like I, I think of my older kids, they're at that age now where, you know, if they were to be firefighters, it would be this time in their lifestyle, their, their life. And they don't know how to cook, you know? And so it's like, I'm thinking more and more people are coming into the firehouse that probably don't have the strong ability in the kitchen or belief in their skills in the kitchen. So just some words of encouragement or words of advice. If you're that new probe coming to the firehouse and they're, it's a firehouse culture, um, you know, kitchen culture in that company, if you will, where they're cooking all the time and it's important, you know, what are some words of encouragement or ideas for that probe to, to kind of just get their feet wet and start putting in some product? I think first and foremost, and this, this advice goes beyond cooking in the firehouse. This goes, I think anybody could tell you who's had younger guys come into the firehouse, watch, pay attention, right? So if the senior men or, you know, the older guys are cooking, pay attention. Like, don't just sit back and watch, you know, go on Instagram, watch Fork and Hose Company or National Fire Radio. Pay attention to what the guys are doing, right? Like, watch them. How are they cooking things? Are they keeping things clean and, you know... Just pay attention. If they ask you to help, by all means, help, you know, and don't be afraid to make mistakes. You're going to make them like it, it's without a doubt, it's going to happen. Um, the important part of that is you learn from them. So if you, you know, you, you burn the chicken, make sure you don't burn it next time. What did you do wrong? Fix it. Right. Um, I think making mistakes and not being afraid to make them is really important. Uh, Working. I like, I like too, how you said to get involved, right? Like, you know, don't be afraid to step up and, you know, cut. And if you don't know how to cut, you know, figure it out, like work with them, watch, learn, you know, ask questions when it comes to cooking. Yeah. And I think also too, like just being honest, because I, I ask every one of the guys that gets assigned, if somebody new comes in my group, can you cook? And if they say no, I'm like, all right, cool. Next shift, I'm going to bring some stuff in and I'm going to show you how to do this. Right. Because like, that's that whole mentorship too, you know? So as, whether you're a leader or an unofficial leader, like that's how you get into mentoring people. And cause like, you don't want them, like nobody really wants somebody to come in and fail at cooking. Cause that means you're getting a shit meal. So that's, no yeah, one's gonna, no one's gonna win on that one unless you want pizza that night and you just want to bust somebody's balls. But <laughs> we've all been there too. Like yeah. I, I, my, one of my first meals I made, I literally burned the chicken, set the grill on fire and almost set the entire back deck on outstanding you know what though i never made that mistake again by leaving the burners on underneath the beer can chicken it was like one of those things like okay i fucked up big time. right and i never made that mistake again and the guys were never like that's it you're never cooking again you know you're banned from the kitchen or anything like that no they 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 ate whatever i put on the table anyway you know whatever i could scrap up together and they ate it and they were they were appreciative and I think that's another thing, too, for, for people that are starting to cook in the firehouse. I think they put a lot of pressure on themselves, and rightfully so. Like, you know, the firehouse culture could be the most critical group of people you've ever met. But I think at the end of the day, those people are going to be appreciative that you took the time and effort to, you know, maybe go shopping, put, put together this meal for you guys to sit down and, and you know, and enjoy together. So yeah. it could be, you know, the worst thing in the world, but at the end of the day, you put the time and effort in it. You'll appreciate that. You know, the other thing too, the other night we did a podcast with a bunch of guys in uh, Mickey Farrell from top floor tactics. Right. Yeah. yeah I watched that. Yeah. yeah. And what, what did he talk about? He talked to he compared the kitchen to the fire ground about how important it is to all work together in the kitchen because on the fire ground, it's the same type of thing. And he was, he was comparing certain tasks in the kitchen to certain tasks on the fire ground. And I just thought it was a super cool analogy, right? Because on the fire ground, we're all doing independent work, but it all goes to that greater good. You know, we all have a job to do. We go and do it. Same thing in the kitchen, right? There's always something that has to be done. If the guy, if this guy's cooking, set the table. If this guy's cooking, he's setting the table. 
you know, make sure the trash is taken out or make sure that, you know, just a thousand different things, right? So it yeah. comes together. And I think that's important, especially for guys that maybe aren't fluid in the kitchen. There's always tasks that could be done to support what's happening. And it's all part of the team. 100%. Yeah. And well, this goes back to like, you know, the, the similarities between, you know, professional kitchens and the firehouse. Well, now there's similarities between the fire ground and the firehouse kitchen. So supporting it's team effort, um, you know, help, help out where you can, what, you know, if you know how to do something, do it. Don't, you know, don't just sit back and, and watch everybody else. I'm going to check my veggies real quick. They sound like they're going pretty good. Now you got that oven going at 450. The uh, veggies and potatoes went in before the chicken because the chicken didn't need as much time, right? Yeah, because these potatoes and carrots, you know, we got to get a little color on them. Now, AJ, when you put them on a sheet tray like that, you want to lay them flat, right? You don't want you don't want them piled up on each other, right? You want a single layer, you know, ideally you want enough room where they could kind of breathe, you know what I mean? Because when you start packing ingredients on top of each other, they're going to steam rather than, than you know, fry or saute. So, right. even if, you know, you're talking about sauteing vegetables in a pan, same thing. If you put them, you know, too many in one pan, you're not going to get the results you're looking for, right? Yeah. So uh, pretty good. These small potatoes are cooking really friggin' fast. That, uh, that good analogy was uh, chopping onions, getting oil ready, and, and you know chasing kinks with the hose line. That was <laughs> yes, yes. You know what? I'm I'm pretty happy with these potatoes and carrots. I think they probably got another five minutes. So I actually might not have timed this out as well as I wanted, but it's all good. Well, you know when you when you're recording, I mean, usually you're not sitting home talking the whole time. You know, and this is this is semi firehouse cooking too. In that, like, things are going to happen. Um, another, you know, tidbit of advice for, for probies or people like I want to start getting involved in the kitchen of the firehouse, cook meals that are firehouse friendly, right? Mm -hmm. right. Things that sit in the, in the, in the, on the stove top that get reheated, you know, easily. Don't try to make, you know, sauteed flounder your first time. <laughs> like, you know, cook things that are, that are, you know, firehouse friendly, like I said, um, It'll, it'll help because there's so many variables in the kitchen in the firehouse. Like you get runs, who's, you know, you got to go help somebody do something else, you know, stuff like that. So try to focus on things like uh, simple things. Cook what you know, too. That's another thing. Yeah. If you only know how to make tacos, make fucking tacos. <laughs> don't, don't practice on these guys. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, the other thing too, though, while you're cooking like this, like, what do you do right now if the, if the tones drop, right? And you got chicken in the oven, right? And you got vegetables almost done. I mean, that's part of the battle too, right? Is the, is the timing. Yeah, I'm pulling these things out. Obviously, I'm not going to leave anything in the oven just because you don't know. It could be an extended sure. period of time. Could, taking them out. And I, I, I'd like to think that everybody's going to understand when you get back, you know, all right, we got to reheat things or, or start over again. Or But just, or, just for guys listening and watching, like if this happens right now, you pull that out, what are you going to do, cover them? Or are you going to let them cool down as quick as possible so that it doesn't carry over cooking? Like, yeah. With, with something, any protein, I'm, I'm not covering them. Okay. Just because, you know, especially, you know, chicken breasts, it's going to dry out, you know. So right now, if you got to run on a, if you got to run out, jump on a rig and go, you're going to pull the chicken breast out and leave them on top of the stovetop, right? The, the veggies I'll cover. I'm not, I'm not super concerned with those overcooking. They're, you know, they're cooked through already, you know. That's another thing too, like everybody loves steak, but steak's a tough thing. Like in all reality, cooking steak in a firehouse, it, you know, you get it to that point, oh, it's perfect, medium, rare, perfect, medium. The tones drop. Well, now what? That is, that yeah. is the one mistake that I made back in 07 was we did filet mignon oh. and lobster tails and i got a psych call right as the food hit table yeah. and the guys were like they looked at me great because i just i house this filet and this lobster <laughs> tail because i knew like in, in an hour it was going to be shit you know yeah. so i might as well right. have inhaled it and it was the fastest filet and lobster tail i've ever eaten but i don't think i've it. ever had medium rare or anything at the firehouse i think everything's well done at the firehouse no oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I worked with a guy who was retired by now, but the the burgers legit could have gone to the NHL. I'm not even 
<laughs> I believe it, man. It's got me. You know why? Because everybody cooks on high. You everybody work with Craig too? What? <laughs> no, I said, you work with Craig too? <laughs> Everybody's got a Greg. So I just pulled the carrots and potatoes out. They're going to con continue to just kind of chill out on the stovetop. Probably another 10 minutes or so on the chicken. Give or take. So this is another thing too. Actually, let me get both of them. Highly, highly recommend anybody, anybody that cooks, not just people just starting out or probies, get a thermometer, okay? This yeah. is a digital one. Of course, the batteries are dead. <laughs> Naturally, right? Time I need it. Um, but I have the backup, just a standard, traditional. This thing will not break. You might have to recalibrate it once in a while. Uh, that's simple. Drop it in some ice water for reach 32, you're good. But thermometer is just going to save your ass. Like at the end of the day, uh, you know, I put a thing up on my Instagram, like uh, worst, worst proby bloopers. And one of them was the guy literally got his whole shift sick with food poisoning. Oh. He gave him mm -hmm. raw chicken. Um, so, you know, it's important. And it's just one of those things. Like, it's a good tool to have. Everybody, all these firefighters, like, you imagine? Oh, my God. <laughs> the entire, he, he said the entire B shift got food poisoning. Oh, oh man. Take so, the whole company offline, right? Let's, we, we actually, I got a couple of them. I wrote them down, too, because they're actually really good. So uh, that one, yeah, the raw chicken one. Um, one guy did stuffed peppers, but he didn't cook the rice all the way through, so he said it was like chewing rocks. Um, <laughs> going back to budgets, guy made yeah. it sounded really good flank steak, but he stuffed it with prosciutto and he had cheese and all these like high end ingredients, right? Like $40 a guy, so they wanted to kill him. Uh, <laughs> another guy he went to pour salt in, never pour salt into the dish, okay? Never take the salt, you know, box and d don't do that because what he did. The lid came off, and he ended up with basically the entire bottle of salt on, the, on his ingredients. Always take your hand, put it in your hand, sprinkle it as you think you need it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, those are just some things, and people people are going to make mistakes, but we got to learn from them. We, uh, we made billionaire franks and beans a couple of weeks ago. What the hell is that? Uh, it's uh, pretty well. I'll send you the recipe. It's, just, it's franks and beans, except with just good ingredients. <laughs> and um, it called for a jalapeno pepper, and... Uh, my uh, one one of my coworkers bought a, a habanero, nice. and I put like three of them in there. So I'm like, I went to taste it, and I was just like, Yeah, you, the meal at that point. Yeah, just from that taste, it hurt AJ, hours later. AJ, you got a couple things here. It says AJ is the man. I've cooked many of dishes, many of his dishes at the firehouse on shift. He's a solid dude. You're getting some props. Sick. Thank you. Whoever that is. Let's see. You got another guy saying you work in a country club, but you're a fantastic chef. <laughs> He ain't wrong, but he ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sean Egan, my buddy up in Buffalo, he's they're doing ribs, I think he said. Yeah. Got checking in from 130 Florence Street. You know, you know, does that ring a bell? 130 Florence? Awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. My, I know my father. Shout out to my dad. He, he like, rallied the troops. So to, to there you go. We're watching what do you do best here. We're watching you do what you do best at 130 Florence. Yeah, it's my, those are my cousins, yeah. You got fried bologna? You ever do you got questions of fried bologna? Uh, I've not done – I've had fried bologna. I've never cooked fried bologna. Right, right, right. Nothing wrong with it, though. Absolutely. we got a bunch of people chiming in here. But um, all good stuff, man. Like, this is fantastic. A lot of good tips tonight and a lot happening here to, uh, you know, educate. I, I just think, like, you know, we kind of threw it out on Instagram earlier today. This was for the, the new chef, you know, the, the new proby, but it's also just the – some ideas and hacks for the for the existing firehouse chef. I mean, I learned a couple of things sitting here tonight. Absolutely. Yeah, and this is this is one meal, right? It's right. Like you can take things that you learn from this and apply them to other meals. That's that's why I I, I like to go back to that whole technique thing and not the recipe thing. Mm -hmm. Right. I just covered what the recipe was and said, chop this, put it in here, do this, and and I wrote you know went through it like a robot. Yeah, you'd learn this recipe, but you wouldn't learn you know things that you could apply elsewhere, uh, which will make you just a better cook in general. I'm going to go finish this uh, chimichurri real quick. So like I said, I put in the shallot garlic, 
vinegar and salt separate. Now I think is a good time. I'm going to add the, uh, the parsley. And my wife doesn't like this. She kind of hates parsley, but whatever I do, I like it. <laughs> so I'm making it. Taking my olive oil. And it's, it's, you know, hey, fellas, yeah, hey, Rob, I'm going to give you controls. I got a job. I got to go to. Okay, oh. man. Um, uh, how do I give you control? I think uh, in the top right corner, you make me the host of your screen. Make host. Do you want to change the host to Robin Amplifier right now? Yes. Okay. And then uh, what you call it? And then you're gonna have to take care of the YouTube live also. If you need help, ask Seth. Oh boy. Oh, All right, boy. Again, hey, hang around, brother. All right, be safe. Go put All that right. trash can out. Yeah. You got this. Thank you. Buddy. We got it. You go get your food on the stove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not. It, it's uh, a deck fire. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is. I just heard it. Uh, what you call it? You have to end the live streaming on YouTube first. Hey, I'll call Seb. Go to the fire. <laughs> The detached deck. <laughs> yeah. I love how he's sitting there. He's like, yeah, it's a structure fire, but this is, I'm like, I got it. It's all good. It's not your first rodeo, right? right. And so we have Google. I like the consistency I'm looking for. I'm going to taste it. It's my house, so I'm going to put the fork back in. Don't do that in the firehouse, all right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's like rule number one. Don't stick your fingers in things. Don't put them in your mouth. And, or at least don't let anybody see you. <laughs> Made a little more salt. That's it. Honestly, this right here is perfect for like this time of year too. You could grill anything and put that on it. Vegetables, meat, fish, whatever it is. I think one of the nice things about that chimney uh churro sauce too is like you figure out how to make that and it's uh like that's that's that that clutch ingredient that can kind of save like almost any meat because like really we've had guys just come in before and they bought what was on sale and i've thrown chimney trail and it got that, that right. uh right on whatever we were cooking and it's worked out really well yeah and that's that's another good point too like shopping for what's on sale i tell guys like just because they'll ask me like you know what should i make you know my first meal a lot of it's like my first meal you know as much as you want to like splurge um for your first meal or something like that you also you want to stay within a budget unless you're paying for the meal then by all means spend it however much you want but shop for sales like go to go if most guys are going to the meat department first right like in all honesty go yeah. there what's the you know what the manager special is see what's on sale and then tailor you tailor your meal from there you know don't build your meal off of what's on sale instead of buying the filet mignon and then going, shit, now I got, you know, $3 to spend on everything else. <laughs> right. So you like to, uh, you like to smoke meat, huh? Yeah. I got into smoking a couple of years ago. Um, <coughs> excuse me. My wife bought me a smoker and I jokingly said it was her bowling ball that she got me. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I liked, uh, ribs, uh, brisket. And we did that. We started a tradition in the family doing smoked turkey for oh, Thanksgiving. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's bratwurst. I mean, that, if I can go on a smoker, we'll do it. It's great. That's another, like, I know some, I, we have a, I, I got it at a, literally a tag sale for 25 bucks, like some electric Weber thing from like the eighties probably. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still great and it's perfect. You know, it's one of those things like smoke meats for the firehouse. Mm -hmm. are perfect. They can sit there all day you know, overnight, you know, you really don't have to worry about much. So I'm going to test these out. I'm going to stick the thermometer into the thickest part. This one takes a little longer. The digital is like instant, which is why I like it. Um, I'm going for, for breasts. I like to go 160, you know, FDA is like 165, but when you cook meat, there's carryover, right? And usually it's five to 10 degrees depending. So Say you want your steak at 140, don't pull it off the grill at 140, pull it off at 130, 135. That'll it'll allow that carryover heat to, to keep, you know, continue cooking it. Let's see, we're done. That's at 165. So it's a little higher than I would hope, but not a problem. What I'm going to do now, 
because I'm actually going to pull this off. I'm just going to put it onto a rubber sheet pan because if it stays in the pan that I cooked it in, it's going to keep cooking and get way over top. Now I'm going to take Porter's chicken. And I'll cook those in the oven. Those are the tenders, so they're not going to take long. But uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I think anybody that's just starting out cooking in the in the in the kitchen in the firehouse, um, cook things that you know if you know uh, you know certain if you're you know you're good at cooking pasta if you're good at cooking like I said tacos steak chicken whatever it is just cook that you know if, if you know something cook it stick with it and and I think the crew will be more appreciative that you put the effort in you know yeah. if you screw that up. You know? Yeah, that's that, that's the truth. I hate. I think it was one of the things that I really get disappointed is when people don't put an effort in, because and I and I always like I made this big, uh, you know, production and ass out of myself one day. But I was like, it's YouTube. Like you can literally go to it and find something. Yeah. And it's a meat, a vegetable, and a starch, and we can figure this out. And there's some guys that just like they don't give. You know. I I think like going back. To, I think we talked about it earlier in this, you know, there's a, I think a, a little bit of a culture change going on. I think it's already started actually, you know, with like just convenience and takeout. And I get it. Like, you know, so especially if you're in a busy company, like you might be busy, you're running your ass off or you might, you know, whatever, of course, you know, it's all right to go get takeout, stuff like that. But if you have the time and, you know, you have enough guys that are, that are willing to help out, why not? Why not just cook a meal? It's going to save you money. Like if you really break it down, I'd love to do the numbers like one day. Like if you just ordered in every day and if you cooked every day, the, right. the amount of money you're saving. We, my firehouse, like the guys on my crew, even though I just got switched over to a new crew, mm -hmm. pretty much like whatever it is, let us know. I know right. some departments, I don't know how you guys are, but you might have a budget like five bucks a guy, 10 bucks a guy. Um, some I know they do like a kitty for the month where it's like you got X amount of dollars for the month and better not go over it you know yeah we rotated just through like because it's a four-man group so every guy just takes a, a turn every 24-hour period uh buying a meal for okay for that but like right now we have a couple people who transferred out and everything so like my group is just me and another guy so we've been cooking every other really every other day yeah wow so yeah i mean like i said everybody's different but you know at the end of the day at least you're, you're getting some cooking in and you know you're feeding each other and that's the most important thing. All right. I'm gonna plate, I'm gonna plate this up for you, Rob, even though you can't eat it. <laughs> I'm coming, I'm gonna get in a in a car with my uh, mask on. Yep, stay my on gloves the, and drive down. Yeah, stay on the porch. Totally fine. Away from the dog. Yeah, away from the <laughs> Yeah. He, he looks like he's having a good time on your right hand side there, just sleeping. Are you here? Yeah. Or she, yeah, her, yeah. Oh, she, oh, on the other camera? Yeah. Yeah, just don't say woof or... <laughs> right. So, you know, ideally you want to let these rest uh, five minutes, give or take. There's no, there's no hard, fast rule. Just want to show everybody. These are the, the, the potatoes and the carrots. Got some color on them. Those carrots are going to be nice and sweet. I'm going to put my potatoes and carrots on the bottom. And I don't know about you, like when you're at the firehouse, you guys plate things up fancy. Do you have to plate for them? Do they make their own plate? How does that work? Depends what I'm cooking and the effort I'm putting in. Because sometimes I plate the food because if I tell them to do it one way, if I say like, listen, this is going to complement everything else, like they won't get it. So like that one pot chicken orzo. I right. take regatta and I put it, I'll, I'll put it into a bowl for him and I'll put that scoop of regatta right on the top because right. that, you know, and I tell him fold it in, it's going to give that creamy texture to it. Yeah. You got to like, give him a little bit of direction. Yeah. So if, it, if it's something like that, like this, I would definitely want to plate for him because, you know, uh, I know what the deal is. <laughs> you can hear like, I don't know if you can hear it, but. Yeah, we can hear, I can There's hear the. Almost like a, a bark of sorts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The best part of barbecue, right? Mm-hmm. 
Here's our cutting board. Like, you don't have to get crazy. Just spoon this chimichurri right on top. And there you go. I mean, simple, simple roasted chicken, roasted vegetables, you know, something that maybe was just like boring, mundane, you know, it gets a little elevated with, with the chimichurri. But that's like, you know, you look at that, that's like a restaurant quality meal, right? That yeah. could be served by us any day of the week. And it's not going to be heavy. So like I house that right now. And then 10 minutes later, we're given instructions on how to shut the live feed down because there's a deck fire. I'm not going to be putting <laughs> that up in my mask, you know, like that's right. a nice thing. Well, what is this saying? Like only eat as much as your mask can hold? Right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean. Every, every once in a while, we like to splurge and have like, you know, the big heavy meals, but something like this, it's healthy. You know, it, you don't have to steam everything. You know, you could roast vegetables. It's, it's, it's still going to be healthy for you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's delicious. And I'm going to eat some. By all means, you made it. <laughs> so the potatoes, I encourage everybody to try it. Boil them first in salted water, then roast them. It just seasons them throughout, and you don't have like salt just on the outside. It makes them taste like a potato. Yeah. Carrots are super sweet. Delicious. And like you said before, like kind of just a recap, like, you know, one, planning the meal out, doing a little food prep beforehand. Yep. And then like with this, especially with the roasted potatoes and the carrots and the chicken, um, but with the, with the vegetables specifically, that oblong cut, and kind of making them all the same size. So as they're in there, they're roasting equally. Exactly. So, you know, it's a, uh, and this is all goes back to like how we can use fire science in the kitchen, you know, like something that's large, it's got to take a lot of heat to absorb it before it burns versus like smaller things. So same, same stuff. We're just going to re reuse the knowledge of what we already know and Perfect. put it into our food. Yeah. You nailed it. You know, we, we know this stuff already. It's just yeah. flying it differently. That's all. Yes. Yes. It's good. Good stuff, man. Well, AJ, thank you so much for uh, coming in and doing this, man. I'm going to try to figure out how to sh shut us down here at the live feed, but uh, I'll forks stick and... around. I'll stick around while you're, while you're uh, trying. Yeah. For, what kind of wine are you drinking, by the way? Uh, this is a Brunello di Montalcino. Actually, we opened this last night. We had some pasta last night because Sundays are for pasta. Um, we didn't <laughs> <laughs> at least at my house, that's, that's like a, a rule. I got to eat pasta on Sundays. But uh, yeah, it's good. It's delicious. Nice. Awesome. All right. Let's see here. I'll stop this recording.